Hi, this is Randy. I recognized that my mother-in-law was a narcissist quite a few years before I recognized that her son, my husband, now ex-husband, was a narcissist. I didn't have a name for what his mother was, but I knew she was somebody that I needed to stay away from whenever I could and not reveal any personal information when I was around her, not get purposely not get close to her like uh, one of the other sister-in-laws did. Um, because I would see at different times that the things that she would say to my ex-husband, also narcissist, would really upset him and send him into a tizzy and, a, and he would become frazzled. And, you know, everyone realizes that when part of how we walk on eggshells is that we we want to make sure that our narcissist partner never gets frazzled because we know it's going to kind of end up turning on us. So we not only make sure that we are always saying and doing the right things, but we try to, you know, control their environment for them and help them to navigate um, the world so that they don't come in contact with things that are stressful and upsetting because we know when that happens, you know, everything blows up and we are the closest person to them, so we're in the line of fire. So, one thing that I found really interesting was the relationship that my narcissist boyfriend slash husband had with his narcissist mother. When we first met, the relationship seemed very connected. He talked to his mother on the phone very often. It was once or twice a day. I didn't really know this because I wasn't living with him, but once we did start to live together, um, my ex-narcissist would, um, his mother would call him or he would call her every morning at 7 a.m. and he would talk to her for about a half an hour. Um, a lot of a lot of it was him listening and her talking. So I I found it you know a, a bit odd, but I had really never you know it's only the second man I've lived with. I I don't have any brothers. You know, I didn't know if this was like something really unusual or if it was bad or even if it was good. I just, you know, it just was. This is, this is what happened. So this uh, narcissist uh, mother-in-law would a lot of times gossip. Mainly she was gossiping about the narcissist's kids her, her grandkids, talking about them, always in their business. What are they doing? How, how are they doing today? Um, talking about how they were like either doing in school or did they have a boyfriend? Were they doing drugs? Uh, this one did something really great. This one uh, is in trouble. This one said this or that to me. Um, and that was mainly their topic of conversation was the kids and uh, and the narcissist mother-in-law, you know, whatever she was saying about the kids, she was piling on a lot of pressure to the narcissist that, you know, he needed to get control of his kids. He needed to find out more about his kids. He needed to support his kids more. He needed to either be nicer to them or, or to cut them off. You know, whatever it was she thought he needed to do, he she would dictate to him um, throughout these morning conversations that were basically just gossip and should have been none of her business 
because you know your grandparents really shouldn't be like so deeply involved in what their grandkids are are doing on a daily basis but this woman this woman was I mean she was very nosy and she didn't have anything else to do and to her it seemed like she was just expressing you know her love and concern so I was thinking about why a narcissist will not go no contact with their narcissist parent now it doesn't mean that if you refuse to go no contact with your narcissist parent that you're a narcissist but I'm having a theory here that narcissists will not go permanently no contact with their narcissist parent and here's why number one they secretly enjoy the drama that they have in their interactions with their own narcissist parent narcissists flock together they like the sense of either kind of being friends with their narcissist parent or enemies with their narcissist parent whichever it is it's drama and they also enjoy gossiping with their narcissist parent sometimes it seems like they're just placating their parent and sometimes it seems like they enjoy it um, I would confront my narcissist husband uh, not knowing he was a narcissist at the time, um, wondering why he would keep engaging with his mother in the way that he was when it would obviously upset him and it was very non-productive type conversations. A lot of talking behind other people's back in the family. Um, and he really never did have an answer for why um, he wouldn't cut contact with her during a, a about a five-year period of time he actually did go really low contact with her and during that time he actually our relationship was the best that it ever was and that was when he was low contact with his narcissistic parent interesting huh so um i think during those times he got strong and one of the reasons why he went low contact with his narcissist parent is because when i went on a vacation with her she told me that I should break up with her son she advised me that um, that he was no good and that I should break up with him and um, she didn't really have any reasons though um, and I thought it was quite odd that a mother would be telling somebody you should break up with my son um, so what did I do? I came right home and told the narcissist husband that um, he was boyfriend at that time, but living together, told him that his mother um, had been trying to convince me on our little vacation that we went on that I should break up with him. This uh, got him so pissed off that um, he called her up. He was cussing and swearing at her, and he went low contact with her because of it. And interestingly enough, like I said, our relationship improved during that time that he was low contact with her. Um, the other, another reason why a narcissist will not go no contact with their narcissistic parent is because they like the attention that they get from the parent. Whether they are the golden child or the scapegoat, they still like it because they get ne negative or positive attention. Um, my narcissist kind of was vacillated that you know he was shifted between kind of being golden he's mainly a scapegoat though his brother is completely golden and then he has a younger brother that seems to be like a lost child type of a thing kind of ignored um by the whole family i'm not really sure why but the narcissist um does like attention and just because um you know codependents or non-narcissistic people are kind of put in these categories of golden children or scapegoats it doesn't mean that narcissist kids that grow up to be narcissists aren't also put into uh, one of those categories of being golden or scapegoat and at the same time be being a narcissist or becoming one developing into one 
So narcissists can also be golden children to their narcissistic parent or a scapegoat to their narcissistic parent. Um, number three, um, the reason why they don't go no, no contact with their parent is because their parent is a very good source of supply. The parent is the keeper of their history. The parent's been there since the day they were born. And the narcissist is so grandiose, they like the fact that there's been somebody with them their whole life who can kind of keep track of um, their life and bring bring back, you know, fond memories of how cute they were when they were a child, how talented they were, how smart they were, bring back some memories for them. The parent, narcissistic parent also is completely willing to share in the narcissistic child, you know, adult child's delusions. So they share in one another's delusions. So it's a wonderful fully ado relationship. And this is why one another reason why the narcissist won't go no time, no contact with their narc parent. Uh, number four, uh, they like to keep someone in their back pocket to abuse. So, narcissistic adult children and narcissistic uh, parents abuse one another. They take turns abusing one another. They get in, uh, direct, you know, knockdown, drag out fights, uh, verbal fights. Uh, they will often go back and forth and tell each other that they're never going to talk to each other again. They will say a lot of FUs, bitch. Uh, one time the narcissist, more than once, the narcissist told me that his uh, narcissist mother, you know, told him he was emotionally abusive. And uh, then he would just respond to me like that bitch, that effing bitch. And, you know, I wouldn't say anything. Um, he was emotionally abusive to his kids and to her, but really not so much to me at the time. So I, I just didn't say anything. Um, I, I didn't want to get involved. I mean, it was not my business um, what his kids were doing. I, you know, I didn't want to get, I wasn't part of the relationship between him and his mother and between him and his kids. So I, I tried to stay out of it and just be supportive to him. Um, but he did tell me that his narcissistic mother told him on more than one occasion he was emotionally abusive. Well, she was right about that. She also told me to break up with him. And, you know, she was right about that. But that does not mean she's not a narcissist because, you know, that's kind of evil when you think about it. Um, you know, I was really the best thing that ever happened to him. And as if she really cared more about me than her own son. Like, she's like, you know... She's talking about her own son, and if she really wanted what was best for him, she would not be telling me to break up with him, right? So she didn't want what was best for him. She was trying to stir up shit. A lot of times she would say that her narcissistic son, my husband, she would call him an instigator. She would say he stirs up shit, and she would also say that about uh, her grandchildren. She was like, it's kind of like, um, you know, she could recognize it so well in others when people were instigators and she was the biggest instigator of all, but she could really recognize it. And she liked to call people, you know, instigators or somebody who's stirring the pot, but she'd get the little smirk on her face as well when she would see some, uh, someone else doing it and call them that. Um, number five, um, narcissists alternate, um, as, each other's flying monkeys against other family members and that's another reason why the narcissist won't go no, no contact with his narc parent he gets too much enjoyment out of supporting his parent as a flying monkey against siblings and against children possibly against the uh, the other parent and the narcissist uh parent gets a lot out of having their own children and grandchildren being their flying mon monkeys. So they won't go, go no contact. But the main reason out of all of these reasons why the narcissist will not go no contact with their narc parent is because they need their inheritance. They need their inheritance. The narcissistic parent has something that they want and need and they cannot jeopardize it so they will never go no contact with their narcissistic parent if it's going to put their inheritance at risk thanks for listening